after patties, we went to Taco Bell, and we got a couple quesaritos, and thought we'd take this time to tell you about the games that we were playing, and what we thought about them. I'll link all these games in the description of the video uh, to BGG, and you can, you know, check them out if you want to. So the first one we played was Babel. Babel, a two-player game from Cosmos, it's two-player line. It's supposed to be super head-to-head, -head, but... It, it is a lot of, like, screw you mechanics in the game, but it's it's not as bad as, like, it was made out to be. Yeah, we watched Tom Vassell's review on it. I'll link it in the description. He says it's super competitive and super in-your-face. And it can be, because you can make some really swinging turns in that game where you can go from, like, being 10 points behind to just, I win. <laughs> like Mike did. <laughs> <laughs> you steal your opponent's stuff, break their stuff, and if you're, only, if you're the only person who gets blue cards, you just keep destroying your opponent's uh, temples, and I, you I, do kind of want to punch your opponent in the face, which is where I was at when he only, trounced I only, me. I only destroyed three of his temples. Let's yeah, you were, only at, you were only at 15 while I was at 8. We played uh, Dark Knights. Dark Tales. Dark Tales. Dark Tales. Dark Tales. Tales. That's what it was. I don't remember who published that one, but Dark Tales. It's kind of like this uh, play a card, draw a card, synergy game. Yeah, like there's there's two small there's two sets of three cards, and those cards determine how you can score extra points at the end of the game and score more points and draw more cards and other stuff like that during the game. And then each card has its own unique effect, and each card becomes has a different power level, basically based on which scenarios you're playing. Like there's cards that let you draw more cards and then earn points based on the cards of that type that have already been played. And then there's this cool effect that whether it's day or night in the game, which are cards that you play, you start in nighttime, but depending on which cards you play there's certain cards that they stay in play in front of you and if at the end of your turn it's nighttime you get two points and then there's other cards where um it's the same thing for daytime at the end of the turn it's daytime you get two points and then those cards are also out there as characters that you can draw at the end of the game and go towards end game scoring yep. it's pretty cool you just play until you run through the deck just watch out for these cards called witches <laughs> because if, if your opponent's holding two of them for the entire game and then he plays them in the last turn with a ten card hand and you only have a five card hand, he's going to run out of cards before you if he's dumb. But Mike, not dumb. <laughs> he just played one card until he could play his last card and match me card for card. And those witches gave me a couple of like 10, 15 point turns. <laughs> yeah. So I think it was like I was at 87 and you were at like 117. No, it wasn't quite that bad. I was at 104. 104. Okay. So still. If you only have two players, Babel's probably better. Yeah. Especially if you're willing to be competitive with somebody else. And then we come to the only game where I won. I got trounced so bad. <laughs> and we played Boss Monster. Boss Monster is a game where you are a monster inside of a dungeon and you're built, setting up these rooms for adventurers to come and try and get through your rooms and if they make it to you, they deal damage to you but if they don't and they die in the rooms then you gain, uh, you flip them over and they become a soul once you hit 10 souls you win and there's uh, there's four different decks in the game there's the room cards which every turn no matter what you get one of those you get to draw one of those. There's the spell deck, which you only get to draw from with certain effects, and he had a really ridiculous combo where he was getting more and more spells every turn. For him, it didn't matter if his dungeon couldn't kill the, the hero coming in. He had a spell to take care of that. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's not like my setup was bad. I was actually, like, towards the end of the game, the dungeon was built up enough in the right way that no matter what hero came through, I could deal with it. His dungeon, even though it generated him all those spells, which most of them are pretty powerful, on its own, without the spells, there were heroes that his dungeon couldn't deal with. He had a room that said if a hero died in it, he got a spell. Well, then he had another room that said, hey, you're, the hero has to go into the previous room when it enters this one. So it would almost always die in that room. <laughs> and give me a spell. And he was getting like two, three spells a turn, and it was just like, yeah, I can't. 
I can play four spells a turn and I get two spells a turn. But but the deck like if it if that was a three player game, it would have gone on longer. Yeah. I would have played my spells on the other player as well yeah. as you. So it would have been a bit, I think it's a better think game for three, pl three yeah. plus. Three to four is probably really good for that. Uh, Dark Tales is probably good for three. Um, if you have people that don't like really heavy games, Dark Tales is really good for that. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to be playing with one other person who is okay with heavy strategy. Who's not going to flip the table and punch you in the face. That too. Then Babel is a really good choice, I think. I really enjoyed Babel, actually. That was a lot of fun. So Babel, uh, rating 1 out of 10? Where are you? For what it is, um, Probably put it up between a seven and an eight, somewhere in there. Yeah, me it, too. It is really good. You can have a lot of fun, and it's quick too. So if you only got like an hour before you got to go do something or go to bed or whatever, just pop it out and play it real quick. Mm -hmm. it doesn't and take a lot of setup. Yep. And for Dark Tales, for me, as it is, it's very light. Especially at two players, maybe three players would be a little bit. It makes me think of like Fairy Tale, the drafting game. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking more along like like it's not bad. So I'm thinking like between I think five, it's, maybe yeah, six. Five and a six, but there's two expansions that are out, which add a bunch of different diversity, and you can add them all to this to the main deck, which makes more players possible and makes more interactions possible. I think if you've got one or both of those, that game could could be a eight or a nine. Yeah, yeah. If you the expansions, looking at some of the cards in those, definitely add a lot. I mean, you can mix it all together or take them out if you only. Have, I mean, if you only have two players, wouldn't recommend playing with all three expansions because that's a lot of cards and it's going to take a long, long time. But if you got four players that want to play it, get all the expansions, throw them in there. It's probably a lot of fun. And then Boss Monster, it's a fun game. There are some runaway uh, strategies in it for what, at least two player. I would say. At two player, it's probably like a five or a six. It's really, really, you can manipulate the game yeah. really easily. I, I think at three player, you can probably bump it up to like a seven yeah. very easily just because the different combos you have become a little less powerful and you have other players to contend with that they can use spells to screw with your stuff. So the game goes on a little longer and you can't just be focused in one area and do well like me, like we were. Yeah. You know? Also, Boss Monsters does have two expansions that we weren't playing with. We were playing with just the base game, so maybe that opens it up or adds another aspect to the game. But all in all, all the games we played and our entire afternoon of screwing around playing geek games, I think it was fun. Out of the three, though, I definitely recommend Battle out yeah. of all of them. Mm -hmm. Like if you have a, a friend that you play predominantly, like, or you guys show up early to like a game night where you play the bigger games, two people show up early, just bust it out, it only takes about a half hour to 40 minutes and it's really fun. And again, the best part about that is you can set the game up in like two minutes. Once you know how to set it up, you're ready to go, you can be playing and... There's one board, two pieces, and two deck of cards. Well, it's, for how simple the setup is, it's wonderful how deep the game gets.